All right. Hello, everybody. We're going to get set up here, start sharing our screen. Thank you, Jake and Gino, for having us. Thank you for the introduction. It was amazing. And that was an awesome presentation by Anthony and Matt. That was a great deal. Yeah, I'm kind of nervous to go after that. All right. <laughs> so here we are, MTI. We are a management company. We do everything. So let's get to our team. Um, the team is Michael and I. I am Vanessa Sanchez, and this is my lovely husband, business partner, Michael Sanchez. And we do everything in-house. We are vertically integrated. Uh, we do acquisitions. We have a construction company. Michael is an amazing project manager, like Gino talked about earlier. Um, I do a lot of the design. And now I have just stepped into property management, thanks to Shannon from All Jake right. and Jake. I have been <laughs> mentored by her for probably the last, I would say, eight months. Um, and it has made tremendous, tremendous, like, holy moly, I didn't know what I didn't know, right? And then yes. also we do asset asset management. Um, a fun fact about us is that we own 100% of our portfolio. So we have not tapped into investors yet, but now that we are starting to grow, I think that is absolutely in the horizon. Can um, you guys share though, real quick, why did you go into multifamily? Because you guys had a really successful fix and flip business. You guys are fixing these properties, flipping them. And what made you decide to get into multifamily? We did. We were doing amazing with fix and flips and we were in the luxury um, single family home fix and flips and mm -hmm. we were making great profits, but we were on a hamster wheel that we couldn't get off of. And, you know, we had done it for three years and we just knew that there was more that, that we wanted to do. Multifamily was always what we wanted to do. We just didn't realize that it was going to be uh, October, 2021, when we joined Jake and Gino. So um, yeah, it, 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 single family is great. And we're actually transitioning back to that. Michael will go into that a little bit more in, in the presentation, but um, yeah, we're boots on the ground. I mean, this is our, this is our market. We do everything right now in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We were born and raised here. So we know what street to invest on, what street not to invest on. It's all about location for us. And one of our biggest partners actually is our credit union. We have teamed up with this local credit union. We've been banking with them for the past six years, and they are one of the most valuable team members that we have. I think that they see how well we work together. We have given a lot of credibility to them. And the deal that we're going to be talking about today, they actually created a unique loan just for this project because right. they believe it so much. So and it had a lot to do with, with the Jake and Gino community, right? When we go in and talk to the bank by having the education and the verbiage from Jake and Gino, it makes us sound like we're experts of 4,000 units and we're on our first deal, right? So we're able to talk with the bank is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. But before you guys go to the, the start to this next slide, what's really important is that credit union piece is so huge, guys. I want everyone on listening to the call right now Credit unions were not a thing in multifamily a few years back. Now, now they're a viable option. And I remember recording a podcast. More than a viable too. option, you know. I think they, they're starting to really eat into the community banks. It was it was Freddie SBL for a while, and they pulled back a little bit. And I, I, I'm telling you right now, these credit unions are eating the community banks' lunch like, and, as we speak. And, right and it was now. really cool, Jake. I'm doing a podcast recording with them, with Vanessa and Michael, and they're actually running to the credit union that day. They're doing their <laughs> tour of their property. You got to see. I hope they have some pictures of these properties. These are not just regular fix and flip these are beautiful units that they've remodeled and they've redone and that's the great thing about it you saw anthony and and uh matt's project a little bit different this is a little bit more high-end than is what we were saying that adaptive reuse which is really cool so i'm getting ahead of myself because i just remember looking hey, you, get, you guys are getting them excited here i can dude, see it dude the property is beautiful i'm like i want to live in these things i mean they're just it was just unbelievable and it's not a huge 55 or 100 unit property it's a smaller property but it's so profitable when things are done well when you buy right you manage right and you finance right you don't need to buy these massive projects. You can go smaller and still make a ton of money. So anyway, why Jake and Gino, guys? Yeah, why Jake and Gino? Oh my gosh, you don't know what you don't know. So we were on the hamster wheel. We thought, we're going to self-educate. This is going to be awesome. And then we started looking up all the stuff on multifamily and we looked at each other like, this is going to take years. We have we don't have years. We have like three months that we're going to take off to learn this multifamily gig. And so um, Michael actually went out to Omaha, Nebraska and went to visit a friend that is a Jake and Gino community member. 
and you guys had the um, money mixer and he actually tagged along and he met Gino and that was it. Like after that, it was like, oh my gosh, they have the educational framework, the buy right, the finance right, the manage right. We put in Mary right because I feel like we're a really good couple that <laughs> works really well together. And I feel our business and our life has been so successful because we did marry right. We are, you know, on the same path and the same, um, you know, mindset when it comes to the multifamily investing. Um, so yeah, we didn't know what we didn't know. We didn't know Jake and Gina was going to be such a huge impact in our life, but we joined, we went to MM4, absolutely phenomenal networking event. And then just everything that the community offers. I mean, you'll you see Noah there uh, with Gino. We took him out to a a money mixer. That's our and son. That was that's him our at, son. At that was nine awesome. Years old, at the nine first years money old. mixer. <laughs> Mixing and mingling. Um, but the education was just absolutely amazing. After we joined in October 2021, we closed this deal three months after. We would have never been able to do that without Jake and Gino. Um, and then the relationships. I feel. We have some of the best friends in this community that we will have for the rest of our lives. The Tams are on here. The Laras are on here. They came out and, and saw our deal. I mean, Julia, Barbara, I mean, absolutely phenomenal people. So we didn't know that we were going to get all of this, but it, it was just an absolute blessing. Um, we joined for the education and didn't know <laughs> what else we were going to be getting. It was I, awesome. think, I think the other stuff is better than the education, right? Because once you learn the education, it's done. You learn it, but then all of a sudden you start making these relationships and you start having these, these experiences that you never thought you'd have. And you're trying to have these relate these conversations with friends and family members, and they're like, What? What are you adaptive? What? What are you talking about? And it's just great when you talk to people in the community, it's like, that's a great idea. I never thought of that. How do we do that? So it's just like the conversations are so much different, aren't they? Yeah, totally different. And you know, the first time that we went on a boot camp, it was in Atlanta, Georgia. And I told Michael, do not leave me. I don't know what I'm doing. I know nothing about multifamily. You are stuck to my side. And then I met these amazing women. And these are the women of Wheelbarrow Profits. And I realized that we have so much in common. So not only did I get an educational platform with the buy right, finance right, manage right, but I also got this group of amazing women who we come together every Thursday on calls we talk about family, we talk about life, um, we talk about our struggles. And I feel this has been the biggest piece in my personal development, as well as my professional. Um, they support me 100%. And so I, I'm just very thankful for that in the community as well. Not you guys are globetrotting here. You guys, oh, yeah, Ireland. That was us in Ireland. That was us in Florida. Ireland. All the, the women of Wheelbarrow Profits there. Florida, all, where's the one on the left? Uh, that was from one of the boot camps. We actually didn't make that one, but that was the women of Wheelbarrow Profits all got together at a boot camp. That was in Knoxville. I'm sitting all the way in the back. You Tennessee, see me standing up in the Florida back. Florida and Ireland. Yes. What a mix. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. uh, gentlemen, also send your wife to the women of Wheelbarrow Profits. She is so nice when she gets off the calls on Thursdays to me. <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. And tells me to buy more multifamily. It's amazing. Yes, buy more, babe. Buy more. Let's go. <laughs> And my wife's on this call right now going, yeah, ha, ha, ha. My wife's a big, <laughs> big part of that right there. She's, uh, if you see in the picture, I don't know if you want to go back to that picture real quick. She's just sitting down over there. So, yep. If you see the picture on the right, she's the blonde sitting next to my daughter, Sophia and Veronica over there. So she spearheads it. It's just, it's just a great, great experience. She's there in Ireland signing a Guinness too, if you saw it there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Um, We'll get into the deal now, right? The deal highlights. So um, like Vanessa talked about earlier, our criteria, our buy right criteria, one of our biggest things, our biggest thing is location. So this deal was location, location, location. It's in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where we're from in an area of town called Knob Hill. Uh, it's right next to the main university, right next to all the, um, it is right next to all of the hospitals in the area, all the major hospitals. It's up and coming. It has uh, restaurants, it has bars, it has cannabis dispensaries, just really blowing up. And uh, so we we like the location. We go into, uh, this thing is an adaptive reuse, what Gino was talking about earlier. So this is an office space to multifamily. So we took an abandoned office space and we turned it into a multifamily location. And uh, it used to be an office space slash warehouse. And we completely transformed it. Extremely heavy lift. We took it down to where it was just the shell of the building, right? So it was only the four walls on the outside, new roof, new HVAC, new plumbing, new electrical, new sewer, new gas, 
new framing, everything from the from the ground up. So all we had was just a, a really nice barrier where the city couldn't look at what we were doing on the inside for a long time, right? So that was great. <laughs> um, and because this, just, <laughs> because this just happened, um, we just finished our video of the project, everything I talk about, we want to bring you guys along for the ride, right? Um, we just got this. So premiering for the first time live on the Jake and Gino's Closers Club, we are going to be <laughs> showing our video. Um, so Vanessa is going to bring that up right now. All right. And Michael, I don't know if you mentioned that this was found on Zillow. So it actually wasn't um, put on a commercial market. It was actually put on, on Zillow, awesome. which was very interesting. I saw it at midnight. I ended up going to, um, I sent it to him on text message. And then we, yeah, what, what happened? I wasn't exaggerating, Jake. I'm telling you, the, the pictures, I don't What's even What's the premium person. for the one with the, the garage door in the kitchen? All of them are going for twenty four hundred a unit. Twenty four hundred. Oh, you guys are getting ripped off, huh? <laughs> Crank <laughs> oh, it up. No, we wanted to fill it up, but from there, <laughs> how things are going really good. I'm, um, guys, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> the, the rentals that are can you move that? Yeah. The rentals that are furnished were at, are actually going for thirty five hundred. Wow, not yeah. surprised at all. You a film company too. Yeah. You guys on HGTV? We're gonna be crazy. Yeah. No, no, no. This is good. They said not yet, Gino. <laughs> That is hey, awesome, well done, guys. guys. <laughs> I mean, that is, I'm telling you, I, I didn't see the entire thing. I just saw a couple of pictures when you guys were doing the podcast sitting in, in the kitchen. That is, is this, is this an HGTV pitch or no? No, no, no. I got, yeah. I got a guy. I can, I can, I can set you up here. There's no reason. Like you guys, you guys should have wow. a show for this stuff. This is amazing. Yeah, that not- That is beautiful. And that guys, what you would have done three years ago, you would have made this property. You would have built it. You have done all this work and you would have flipped it. Right. And you've been on to the next project. But now the mind shift is totally different. Now you you built this thing. This is generational. This is something that you can hold for the next 20 years. It's not going to get old. It's brand new. There's tremendous value. You have cost segregation on here. You have principal pay down on here. You have appreciation. You have cash flow. This is freaking phenomenal. Congratulations, man. This is awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah. Oh, wow. So everything is brand new. I mean, we had the outer shell, as you can see in the before picture. Um, and we designed everything. I mean, it's a 7,000 square foot, uh, space. We did seven luxury apartments, a thousand square feet each. You could see the, the office storefront windows. We kept all of that stuff. Um, the garage doors, it was actually an automotive shop. And so we kept them, we kept the, the garage doors to be able to open up into the living in the kitchen area. And we have completely filled all of them. We finished renovations in at the end of April. And we are completely leased. And a lot of the people are from out of state coming to to work here in New Mexico. And so when they look at this, they go, oh, my gosh, it reminds me of L.A. or it reminds me of like New York. And so they're they're just really cool. Uh, We're at twenty four hundred dollars per month. You know, Jake and Gino taught us about security deposits. And then they also taught us about uh, surety bonds. And so what we do is we partner with Rhino to do nine hundred dollar move in fees. And so we don't take any security deposits. Um, everybody pays a $900 move-in fee, a $300 pet move-in fee, and then every month they're charged uh, $30 per month. Wow, that is awesome. Manage That's a nice floors right. in there. You got to keep them, got to keep them fresh. You know? That was amazing. We're doing, we're doing like all of the renovations, but we're doing the education at the same time. So we're building our property management company at the same time we're building this, uh, these units, right? 
Um, I'll run through the highlights of the, the guys. Project. I think you set the bar for closers club. If you're not bringing a hype video from now on, I don't know if you're getting on the show. And I, mean, this to, is, uh, I think we got to bring a hype video, Jake. What I wait, we're, we're leaving, we're leaving it on the table too, bro. Ooh. Shout out to Anthony Vicino, right? Anthony Vicino, whenever he was one of our first, um, what is he accountability coach? Yep. Yeah. And he told us, what are you guys doing? You better be documenting this. You better be doing something. So we, it was part of the budget, right? We paid about $5,000 for this video for him to be coming once a month and filming and doing what we we're doing in there. We have a longer version, like a five minute version for investors that really want to see everything that went into it. It's awesome. Um, guys, you guys are buy right, too- manage right, finance right, marry right, and brand right. You're branding brand yourselves right. really well. This is excellent. Awesome. The, the thing I want to say is that what's really interesting is the amount of probably available space. You guys are so far ahead of the curve because the amount of available office space, it's probably going to be hitting the market for this type of, uh, of turnaround. You guys are well, well positioned. And I just hats off to you because it's, it's coming. So well, check out these numbers. Yeah. Check out these numbers. 70% um, average um, vacancy in America right now in office space after COVID. So every time you walk into a big city, the downtown, the skyscrapers of office space that used to be completely filled, they're mostly 70% vacant. They cannot refinance. Their more their balloon payments are coming up and they yes. cannot refinance. And the banks don't even want to take them back if they couldn't refinance. Nobody knows what to do with these properties, but MTI does. That's where we come in. <laughs> well positioned. Well positioned. <laughs> and this is for anybody out there who's thinking about it. I, I mean, if if you're if you're in the space, learn how to to learn how to buy these properties. If you're in project management, you're in construction, learn how to buy multifamily, learn how to manage these assets, find capital in the community. If your strength is what, what Michael does as far as project management, as far as you know, putting a beautiful product together, go find somebody who can help you out with the other aspects of this, of this business. Absolutely. And um, so you guys could see the numbers here. Um, we purchased the actual building for 490000 relatively low cost, 70 grand per unit. And then the CapEx was much more, um, 1.2 million for the CapEx that went into that. The great thing about this is this included um, our engineering costs, our holding costs, of course, the construction costs, but it also allowed us to pay ourselves, right? We were the construction, we were the project manager. The uh, bank allowed us to put our salaries into this as well. And it also covered the debt for the 15 months that, it, that we were doing this. So um, of course, we're not cash flowing for the first 15 months. Our loan is actually paying that. So that $173,000 per unit covers all of those all in. Um, we spent 1.7 on the whole project. It's now worth 2.5. So we were able to get $800,000 in equity in about 15 months. Um, the wow. loan terms, we got 5%, but this was the best thing that Jake and Gino taught us too, was uh, negotiating with the credit union. They offered us a 4.5% um, adjustable rate. They wanted to do more like bridge debt for this loan. They wanted us to get the construction done. And then whatever market rate was going to be at when we stabilized, that's what they were going to give us for the long-term debt. I told them I wanted long-term debt up front, And they said, okay, we could do that for 5%. And I took it. They didn't think I was going to take that. That was a slam dunk. We would have been at six and uh, six and three quarters right now. And it would have killed the deal. Long-term now. fixed rate financing, baby. That's Absolutely. where it's at. I love it. And kicker on the bottom, everything separately metered because we built this out ourselves. So we made sure we did that. Um, $800,000 of equity, Jake. Do you know how many pizzas that is? I got to make like, I don't know how many thousands. You make pizzas. them, I'll eat them, Gino. I <sighs> missed that. <laughs> and That's so a lot guys... of pizzas I got to make, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. If you guys have any questions about the numbers here, um, the revenues at 212000 what Vanessa went all the, over all the other revenue that we bring in with it. Um, expenses, we're running at about 34% right now because we did do everything separately metered. Plus we're charging so much for the units that, um, you know, we're still, that's still $10,000 a door per year. So that's still a high expense, but it's only at 34%. So our NOI is good. Our cash flow after um, debt is at 52. And we get into now what we use. So we purchased the property for, we put down 375,000. That was our 401k. We pulled out our 401k, went after this property, right? So that's a 14% cash on cash return, but that didn't matter to us. I wanted to put that number, but it didn't matter to us because now we're in the middle of our secondary loan, um, our second mortgage on it. We're going to be able to pull out 340000 So by the end of the year, with the cash flow, we'll be no cash into it, and we'll be able to go into infinite, infinite returns after this year, right? So forget the cash on cash. We are looking at getting our money back and going after another uh, property. But the bonus that I love the most, I love real estate so much. There's so much money that could come from so many different directions. 
That's the cash flow that we wrote for an underwriting for the bank. But here's the things that we have on top of it. Um, our, our bonus depreciation, because we gutted out an entire building, we got to take all of that as a phase one depreciation. So everything we gutted out, a complete office space, complete warehouse, we got to do that in year one. Then we came in and bring in $1.2 million worth of capital, and we're able to do the bonus depreciation on that as regular. So on $1.7 million, we're at nearly $675,000 of bonus depreciation in year one. Amazing. This thing, that completely takes out our 401k, no penalty. We get that back, right? Uh, without, with the taxes already being run through it. Um, Dino, sounds familiar. You did that once? Someone is someone is not if someone someone is not paying federal taxes for a little while, Jake, huh? It's just a, it's a nice little business you got yourself going. And I, I don't want anyone to miss what Michael said and Vanessa said. They paid themselves on this project. They learned that they could pay themselves on this project because they were they were project managing it. So it was built into the loan. So they're getting a draw on this on this project as they well deserve it because they're putting all their time and effort into it. And that floated them. And that was able for them to able to like you know, whatever pay bills or do whatever they wanted that money. So that's a really important component that I don't want people to miss on this as well. And if you know how to negotiate with the bank, once you realize that the bank needs you more than you need the bank, our project is less risky if we're paying ourselves. So why wouldn't they want us to put that in the loan, right? Yes. So whenever we're able to go with those kind of things to the bank, they put it in there. Um, we still have a year left of IO, right? So that's not included in this 50 in the cash flow. So that's an additional 2000 a month. Um, taxes, New Mexico is a non-disclosure state. So when we bought this building, because it's just, it was only worth 500,000, the taxes are worth 4,500 to 4,900 a year. We're, we underwrote at 19,500 a year. They haven't adjusted. We don't think they're going to adjust within the next two to three years. So that's additional cash flow for us right now, which is amazing. Uh, we'll wait till they till they find it and they adjust it. But until that point, we have another fifteen thousand dollars of cash flow a year. And then anything we do is corporate rentals, as you could see, some of these are furnished. That's on top of this underwriting as well. So we make about another seventy seven hundred dollars a month of cash flow, besides our underwritten conservative approach. When all the dust settles in a few years. We will be making, you know, our regular cash flow. But for right now, we're going to be taking that and expanding our portfolio. I, I saw the comment that Jake made. This is one of those deals where if you're really looking into legacy creation and you want to hand something down to your, to your, you know, to your children or to your heirs, this, this asset's going to be new for the next 30 or 40 years. This is something, and this is your buy right criteria. And now there's, you know, a couple here that really understands their buy right criteria is what I love it. They see a deal, they know what a deal looks like, and now they've done it and that's what they're focusing on. So there's so many good things about this asset. What about so the rents, guys? Do you, do you think you have a lot of room to go still on them? Or do you, yeah, I think it's, so. Yes, it's, absolutely. We, we've gotten no pushback, which is absolutely crazy. So just to be quite honest, um, so we were doing corporate rentals. When we finished the construction in April, we actually partnered with a uh, corporate rental property management company here in Albuquerque. So Netflix is huge here. Well, the writer strike happened and everything shut down. There's no films being filmed. Um, Except for every- yours. Except for, yeah. So, so our corporate rental um, property management company actually got a production that was still filming to rent these for one month. And so we were getting $3,500 a month for, for last month. Right. We, we were happy with that, but things started falling through the cracks. They weren't getting back to us. I mean, we had an extensive call because I had, had been mentoring with Shannon. I knew all the questions to ask. So we got on a call with these people and I just pretty much laid it out. This is what's going to happen. I need updates. Ooh. I need this. I need that. Like, this is this is what I expect from you as our third-party property management. None of that happened. So what we have also learned from Jake and Gino is you hire slow and you fire fast. We fired them on Thursday, okay, this past week. We fired them on Thursday, broke our contracts because all of the production company was out. And I filled, Michael and I together filled these by Sunday night. It's gangster. Wow. All of them. Yeah. All we of them. have had no pushback. <laughs> you guys are on great. The, on the $2,400 <laughs> rent. I mean, once you walk onto this property, they sell themselves. I mean, people walk in there and they're like, holy moly. No, you want to, you want to rent something like this clearly, right? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. So yeah, no pushback whatsoever. What's next? What's Ooh. next? All right. <laughs> so um, sometimes for our thing, we focus on Albuquerque. We really want to revitalize our city. We love it here, but we found the best thing to do. It's a small enough market 
we're not focused on um, being experts between 20 and 50 units, uh, 100 to 150 units. We're focused on being experts in Albuquerque. So that means single family, multifamily, warehouse, retail, doesn't matter. Storage. It's, it's a small storage RV space. We want to know what the city needs and we want to give it to them. And we want to know the numbers on everything. And we've gotten really good at that. And we're, we're floating in and out of learning all the different areas. So we really like our city. We want to revitalize it. And we're, um, we know different deals, right? If something comes our way and it's not for us, we know we can wholesale it. We know that we can take it down. We know the people in the area that we need to take it to. Whatever it needs to be, uh, we want to be the boots on the ground for that. Um, our other thing that we're doing is we're focusing on creative finance. As you guys all know, in this climate, um, creative finance is huge. We're able to take down a lot of deals. So the last year and a half, our education has also been deep in creative finance. And now that we've made that corner, we're starting to teach real estate agents exactly different structures for deals in single family and multifamily. So about once a week, I get together with about 30 agents and we go through uh, 30 different agents a week and we go through creative structuring. That is our deal flow. So instead of cold calling, looking through everything, the agents are bringing us deals that they don't know what to do with and they don't know how to structure because of the current climate. And we're showing them how we can get, uh, how we could take these deals down. So that's been great for us because that's our deal flow. Um, we're building out the single family side of the company again, because there's a lot of opportunity here. So we're back in fix and flips. We're but back we in, aren't doing them. We're, um, we're, we're building out our company, right? We've been working yeah. on the business. Systematizing it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're vertically integrated. We have the construction company. We have the project management. We have acquisitions, but it's all because we have our team, our subcontractors, our employees. Um, that is a way that we're going to be able to funnel, keep our construction crew really going so that when we get, you know, if we have five single family houses going and then a big multifamily comes up, we can crash all five houses onto one multifamily property and turn it quicker by having that in-house. Um, so we're, we're doing a lot of deals. We're getting a lot of funneling from that. We're always looking for uh, joint ventures and private money in these things. We're offering 15%, right, on your private money. If you don't want it to sit in the bank or don't want to put it in stocks or crypto, go ahead and give us a call. We know what we're doing. And we're always hunting down our next deals. Vanessa's building out the property management. I'll let her talk yeah, about that. So this has been something that I've been super interested in. I mean, we're, I know Jake is all about being the Chick-fil-A of, of <laughs> property management. We're, we're the, the four seasons, I feel like. I feel that, we have 20 doors total. And I feel the things that we've been able to um, give to our tenants and our residents is a great, just customer service, you know, being a friendly face, um, being somebody to be there to, to give them what they deserve. And so building out those systems, you know, continuing to talk with Shannon, I think has just been absolutely phenomenal. Um, and that that's what my focus is. Shannon is one of our regional managers that also coaches just for everybody out there uh, from the property management team. Yeah. And then final giving back. We love real estate. As you can tell, we love teaching it. We love training it. We're bringing all of our friends and family. I think if my family doesn't hear me shut up talking about real estate, I tell everybody to quit their job and <laughs> go after it. And do it. But also like, uh, for instance, it's we better than up... talking politics at Thanksgiving. All right. That's right. That's right. Uh, we teamed up with a local high school that's taking a whole different route to education. They're doing an entrepreneurial high school. They asked us to do a 12 week internship for their students. So we're taking them to multifamily deals. We're taking them to wholesalers. We're taking them to fix and flip. We're showing them a 12 week rotation of what they can accomplish in real estate instead of the regular um, W2 lifestyle, right? So we're real excited Beautiful. about that. That's awesome. Um, that is great. And please book a call. If you are not a Jake and Gino student, um, please just book a call, see what it could do for your life, for your trajectory on your business. I mean, it has just absolutely transformed our life and we, we love this community and we don't know where we would be without it. We probably wouldn't have a deal right now. Let's put honest. it this way. Yeah. If it was a yearly fee, it's a one-time fee. If it was a yearly fee, we would pay it every year. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I mean, so, it's down. so <laughs> go ahead and join up. It'll definitely change your business. It is a community though. And I appreciate Thanks, you guys, guys saying that it's not, yeah. this is not some sort of, you know, uh, online edge. This is a, a, a full-blown community with amazing people with, with like-minded values. And I think that's, what's the most powerful thing about it. So I appreciate that. That's absolutely if you, you want to come Guinness with Gino in Ireland, just join the community. <laughs> and that's what happens. You got to call every year. A couple of the retreat. That was great. You guys have contact information. Great. Excellent. <laughs> Absolutely. So the QR code links you to everything. Our Facebook, our Calendly. Um, let's get that out. Um, that links you to everything. So um, it has all of our email. Of course, our contact Calendly. If you want to schedule a Zoom with us, um, we love networking. We love teaching. We love learning. 
Um, we don't care if it's, we don't have a deal to talk about, just reach out to us, uh, jump on a call with us. And then here's our information, of course, um, right here. And also um, on Saturdays, you could find us at the Wealth by Choice Network, something that another Jake and Gino member started, uh, Valerie Shira, shout out to her. She asked us to co-host this community and a bunch of Jake and Gino members get together on Saturdays. Um, I think they're doing an underwriting pod right now. And it's just a great way to stay motivated. We have just motivational speakers, underwriters, you name it. I mean, we get all kinds of different speakers on there and it's just a great way to stay motivated, keep going, but you'll see us there every weekend as well. It's, it's a really good thing to join. Awesome. Thanks guys.